Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today, we're going to talk about a fascinating subject, infinite loops, using the not mind to create recursive manifestation. And I know that sounds like a mouthful. I am inspired by a really wonderful writer, Richard Dots. If you ever get a chance, read any of his books. He has several really amazing books. In his book, Infinite Manifestation Loops, he discusses a concept called the not mind and the idea of recursive manifestations. I've been working on this for a little while and I love the language and explanation of the not mind and I wanted to teach it as I've learned it because I think it is a powerful tool that you can have in your toolbox. The not mind as Richard Dots describes it is the unlimited infinite part of our being that goes beyond the mind. It is indescribable and ungraspable by the mind, not mind is where all manifestations arise before physical conditions become apparent to the mind. The idea is that your mind is limited and the not mind is everything else but your mind. And if you can connect to this not mind, and that's what he calls it, then you can effectively manifest easily and you can create recursive manifestations that continue doing the work, something that you can do only once and it works repeatedly on a loop. Well, I'm here to tell you after really working with this concept that this is one of the major keys, the newest way that you can manifest very easily. An exploration of not mind unveils a universe of limitless possibilities. The concepts in this episode are a transformative gateway for perceiving and interacting with the world, a departure from the well-trodden path of just manifesting and thinking. Not mind is a concept that defies easy description. It's the silent space between thoughts, the boundless expanse where the seeds of reality are sown before they bloom into the physical world. It's not a thing to be grasped by the mind for it exists beyond the reach of your everyday mental processes. This is where the magic happens in a realm where the rules of the physical world don't apply and our deepest desires can take root and flourish. My journey into the depths of not mind began first of all with exposure to Richard Dots and also some concepts discussed by Dr. Joe Dispenza also as just a quest for knowledge and a search for meaning. I ventured beyond the familiar landscapes of logical reasoning and into the wilds of intuition and inner wisdom. In the quiet spaces between thoughts, I discovered a source of creativity and power that was both awe-inspiring and humbling. The revelations I encountered were not just personal epiphanies, they held universal truths. I learned that we are all artists of our reality, painting on the canvas of existence with the brush of our consciousness. Now, I love to use the artist metaphor because I'm an artist, so that always comes up for me, but it's true. All too often, we limit ourselves to the colors and strokes that our minds know, ignoring the vast spectrum of possibilities that not mind offers. This is not a mere guide to manifestation. It's an invitation to an adventure in your consciousness, a new concept. I'm wanting to challenge you to look beyond the familiar patterns of thinking to embrace the unknown a little bit. And here you're going to find not trite instructions or step-by-step -step methods. Instead, you will embark on a journey of discovery where the realizations are as unique as the individuals who seek them. We will delve into the concept of recursive manifestation, a process that is mysterious and powerful an easier way to manifest. What you discover here may challenge you, it might inspire you, and ultimately will transform you the way you perceive yourself in the world around you. The concept of not mind eludes the tight grasp of your everyday consciousness, yet its presence is as real as the air you breathe. Not mind isn't just another component of your psyche, it's the backdrop against which the tapestry of your thoughts and experience is woven. 
Imagine standing at the edge of a vast ocean. The ocean represents not mind, boundless, deep, and mysterious. Your thoughts, the mind, are like the waves on the surface. They're visible, audible, and tangible, but beneath these waves lies a depth that remains untouched by the tumult on the surface. This depth, this profound stillness, is not mind. It's the source of all creation, yet it remains creationless in itself. It's the silence from which every sound emerges and to which it returns. In exploring not mind, we realize that the relationship between mind and not mind is not one of opposition but complementarity. The mind, with its thoughts, ideas, and perceptions, is like an individual painter who believes he is only as good as the paintings he creates. Yet not mind is the canvas, the paint, the studio, and the very essence of creativity that allows the painter to exist. It's the foundation upon which the mind builds its constructs. Throughout history, philosophers and mystics have grappled with concepts akin to not mind. In the ancient philosophies of the East, it's been referred to as the Tao, the underlying natural order of the universe, which is beyond comprehension. Western philosophers have touched upon this notion, though often cloaked it differently. Plato's realms of forms hints at reality beyond the physical, a realm of perfect ideals, of which our world is merely a shadow. In more contemporary terms, quantum physics starts to brush against the edges of not-mind. It suggests a world is not as solid and predictable as our minds would have us believe, where particles exist in states of potential until observed. This is the dance of the mind and not mind, one constantly shaping and being shaped by the other. Understanding not mind requires us to let go of our need for concrete definitions and to embrace a sense of wonder and mystery. It's about accepting that there's a part of our existence, a vast and powerful part, which we can never fully grasp through thought alone. It's about learning to feel, sense, and experience life in a way that transcends words and concepts. In our quest to understand not mind, it becomes essential to reflect upon the familiar terrain of our minds. The mind, a magnificent tool, shapes our perceptions of reality and our creative endeavors, yet in its complexity, the mind also harbors many limitations, subtly steering us away from the vastness of not mind. Let's consider the mind as a masterful artist, one who paints the world as we know it. Through the brushstrokes of perception, it colors our experiences, beliefs, and understandings of the universe. That's all we know is our mind. And the mind crafts stories from our past, molds our present, and sketches the outlines of our future. It's a powerful creator, but it works within the confines of its own canvas, often unaware of the infinite gallery that surrounds it. This artistic analogy brings us to the crux of the mind's limitation, its adherence to the known, the logical, the rational. In the realm of rational thinking, every idea must have a structure, every thought a foundation in logic. This is the mind's strength, but also its Achilles heel. It excels in solving problems within the very tiny parameters of its understanding, yet struggles when faced with the formless, the intangible, the realm of not mind. Consider a complex puzzle. The mind approaches it methodically, piece by piece, applying logic and past knowledge. This approach is effective within the puzzle's boundaries, but what if the solution lies outside the box? Here the mind falters, confined by its own constructs. The contrast between mind and not mind in problem solving becomes evident in their approach to challenges. While the mind dissects and analyzes, not mind embraces and encompasses. It perceives not just the problem, but the space around it, offering solutions that transcend conventional thinking. This is akin to stepping back from a painting to appreciate it in its entirety, rather than getting lost in the details of one tiny corner. Over-reliance on rational thinking can lead us into a maze of circular logic where new ideas are stifled by old patterns. It's like walking down well-trodden paths in a forest, never realizing 
there are unexplored trails just beyond the thickets. By confining ourselves to the rational mind, we often overlook the intuitive leaps, the creative sparks, and the silent insights that bubble up from the depths of not mind. This is not a critique of the mind, but rather an exploration of its boundaries. It's an invitation to recognize when to let the mind lead and when to step into the expansive dance of not mind. By understanding the limitations of your mind, you open the door to a deeper, more holistic way of thinking and being. Most of us are trying to manifest or create realities from the limited viewpoint of our mind and the limited power of our own mind. Even when we align our mind with our heart, which expands our power slightly, we are still not in tune with the not mind, the portion of our existence that lies beyond the mind. What happens is in the not mind, these loops start to occur. Negative manifestation loops. These are the patterns that often unknowingly shape our experiences and realities in ways that don't serve our highest good. Many of the things we're manifesting are within loops. As Dots explains, the mind should only be used briefly to decide and develop what you want. You can use the mind to specify structure of your intentions, but everything beyond that point has to be dropped and left to the universe. In computer programming, a recursive function calls upon itself. Before we talk about what recursive functions are, we first have to know what a function is. A function is a block of code that performs a specific task. For example, I could have a function that sorts a list in alphabetical order. When this function is called upon to perform the task, it always executes the same instructions to sort that list. Therefore, I could simply pass or input the unsorted items of the list into that function and it would output the list in sorted form. A computer always does what it's programmed to do 100% of the time. It does not rely on beliefs, emotions, or mood to function. There is nothing random about a computer's outputs. Similarly, when you call upon a computer function, it always performs the same set of pre-programmed instructions without fail. What differs is the input you provide to the function so that it can do its job. Dots goes on to explain that this holds many parallels with how the universe operates. The universe always responds precisely and instantly to your intentions. When you hold an intention, the universe responds with the same set of code and produces the desired output without fail. However, the universe responds precisely to your counter intentions and conflicting thoughts as well. So if you execute a set of instructions and immediately override it with another, you end up with no usable output. We can use intentions that form functions and become recursions so that they loop. This loop is an ongoing manifestation. You may think that's impossible, but we do it all the time. And unfortunately, it's usually negative. At the heart of these loops lies our mental and social conditioning. From the moment we're born, we're taught to perceive the world in certain ways, to respond to stimuli according to societal norms, and to build a belief system based on the experiences and teachings of those around us. This conditioning becomes the lens through which we view our life, often tinting our perceptions with biases and preconceptions. These negative manifestation loops are not just personal, they're reinforced by the collective consciousness of our societies. They are the echo chambers of shared fears, limiting beliefs, and societal norms that resonate through our individual mind experiences, binding us to cycles that are hard to break. We find ourselves manifesting not only our personal anxieties and limitations, but also those absorbed from the world around us, from pendulums around us. But there's a way out of these loops. It begins with awareness. The first step in breaking any cycle, awareness allows us to see these paths for what they are, well-worn tracks that we have the power to step away from. It's the moment of realization that there are other routes, other possibilities beyond the dense foliage of our conditioned responses in our limited tiny minds. Recognizing these patterns requires us to become observers of our own minds. We learn to watch our thoughts, emotions, and reactions without judgment or attachment. This is not an easy task. It's like trying to watch a play while being one of the actors. However, with practice, we start to discern the script we've been following and see the opportunities to improvise, to write new lines, to change the narrative. 
interrupting these negative patterns is where the magic of not mind comes into play. Once you become aware of it, you can instruct with intention to dissolve these patterns. With the not mind, it is very easy to do. Unlike the mind, which operates within loops of conditioning, not mind exists outside of them. It offers a perspective that is untainted by past experiences and societal expectations. When we tap into not mind, we tap into a source of creativity, intuition, and insight that can rewrite our stories. Breaking the cycle is not about discarding the mind. It's about harmonizing it with the wisdom of the not mind, allowing the not mind to connect to the subconscious not mind within us, and then to the overall conscious mind as an expression. It's about realizing we're not bound to the paths we're walking so far. We can forge new ones, guided by the light of our higher consciousness. So we must learn the process of dissolving existing mental and energetic patterns. These patterns are like invisible threads woven into the fabric of our being, shaping our perceptions, reactions, and ultimately our realities. Imagine standing before a grand tapestry. Its intricate patterns woven over time represent the layers of conditioning and beliefs that have been imprinted upon us. Some of these patterns are beautiful, contributing to the richness of our character. Others, however, are knots and tangles that disrupt the tapestry's harmony. Dissolving these patterns is akin to gently unraveling these knots, restoring the fabric to its original unblemished state. Now, I know I love to use the tapestry metaphor, but it is literally what is happening. It is a tapestry. The journey of dissolving these patterns begins with mindfulness, something I mention in every episode, the gentle art of just being fully present and aware. It's not about forcefully changing your thoughts or emotions, rather it's about observing them with compassion and understanding, and then connecting to the not mind, which is much easier in a state of mindfulness, and allowing with intention for these patterns to dissolve. One effective method of dissolving these patterns is to step back from our thoughts, to observe them without becoming entangled with them in meditation. It's like sitting by a river and watching the flow of water. The water represents our thoughts, sometimes calm, sometimes turbulent, but always in motion. As we watch, we learn not to get swept away by the current. Another practice is self-inquiry which involves deeply questioning the beliefs and assumptions that underpin our thoughts and behaviors within our small, normal mind. When we ask ourselves questions, we are connecting to the not mind. Why do I believe this? Is this belief serving me? What would I be without this thought? This process shines a light on the shadows of our conditioning, bringing to light the patterns that we silently direct our life script with. In the world of therapy and healing, we find countless examples of how addressing and dissolving subconscious patterns can lead to profound changes in a person's life. Techniques such as cognitive behavioral therapy, hypnotherapy, and even newer modalities like energy psychology all work towards the same goal, freeing the individual from invisible chains of past conditioning. Now the key to connect to the not mind is the zero state. Imagine the zero state as a vast serene lake, its surface perfectly still, Undisturbed by wind or rain, this lake is the epitome of tranquility and potential. It reflects everything around it with clarity and precision, yet it is not defined by these reflections. This natural, unconditioned state is the essence of the zero state, a state of pure being, uncolored by thoughts, emotions, or external circumstances of the limited mind. The journey to this zero state is not a quest for a new destination, but a return to our original essence. It's a process of unlearning, of peeling away the layers of conditioning and belief that have accumulated over time. It's about rediscovering the stillness and purity at our core, which remains untouched by the turbulence of daily life. One effective technique for returning to the zero state is through deep relaxation and stillness. These practices guide us away from the constant chatter of the mind into a space of silence and stillness. Check out my episode, Be Still and Know, where I talk about the incredible power of silence and stillness. It's in this space that we can experience the zero state. 
even if only for a brief moment at first. The practice of deep relaxation is not about forcing the mind to be quiet, but rather letting go of resistance, allowing the mind to naturally settle into stillness. You can always connect to the not mind without going into stillness. It's always available according to dots. And the thing is, when you have intentions stated within the zero state, they are the most powerful. Intentions set here are untainted by the ego or desire. They are the true expression of your innermost self, your highest purpose. To set such intentions, you must delve deep within, beyond the layers of conditioned wants and socially imposed needs, of the voice of the pendulum that's in your head. It's about asking yourself, what is it that my soul truly longs to manifest? Once we have clarity on our intentions, the next step is to learn how to direct our energies towards these intentions. This is not a forceful act, but a gentle alignment, like tuning a musical instrument to the right frequency. It's about aligning your thoughts, emotions, and actions with your intentions, creating a coherent flow of energy that moves towards your desired outcome. However, this alignment is not merely a matter of willpower or mental effort. This brings us to the delicate balance of effort and surrender in the manifestation process. What effort involves the active alignment of our energies, surrender is about trusting the process, letting go of attachments to outcomes, and allowing the universe to work its magic. Surrender does not imply passivity, rather it's an active trust in the flow of life. It's recognizing that there are forces at play larger than our individual selves and that our true power lies in being in harmony with these forces. When we balance effort and surrender, we become co-creators with the universe, participating actively in the dance of creation while being open to the guidance and opportunities that come our way. Understanding the not mind, we come to the idea of recursive manifestation loops. Imagine a spiral staircase that loops upward infinitely, where each step not only takes you higher but also enhances the staircase itself, making each subsequent step more empowered. Recursive manifestation loops work in a similar way. They are the process where the act of manifesting enhances the power of your manifestation, creating a self-reinforcing cycle of positive outcomes that requires no work. The foundation of recursive manifestation loops is the understanding that your intentions and thoughts are not static. They evolve and grow with each cycle of manifestation. Each successful manifestation feeds back into our belief and energy system, strengthening our ability to manifest even more effectively in the next cycle. To create and utilize these loops, we start with a clear intention. But we also, in our intention, instruct that intention to be ongoing. For instance, we have unknowingly placed a very powerful recursive manifestation loop in our affirmation when we say large sums of money come to us easily and quickly in increasing quantities from multiple sources on a continuous basis. When we say that and use it as an intention from the zero state, then we can say it once. And in effect, these large sums of money will come to us on a continuous basis until we stop it from happening while in the zero state at some other time. The next step is to feed this reinforced belief back into our next intention with each cycle. Our confidence in our ability to manifest grows as does the clarity and power of our intentions. It's a process of continuous refinement and empowerment. So first, before approaching any situation in life, strongly connect to not mind and feel the immediate difference in your inner state. As Dots tells us, there is no need to analyze or describe the specific changes you feel on the inside. It is sufficient to know that there is universal strength supporting you in every step along the way. You're always lovingly supported by the universe, even when things don't seem like it. Second, let's set a recursive intention to connect not mind to not mind until all aspects of a situation have been resolved to zero. This connection ensures that all aspects of a situation, conscious or unconscious, are taken care of. Therefore, there is no need to state or go through every detail of a situation manually. Instead, you apply not mind to not mind. You connect with every aspect of a situation that needs resolution, whether you have stated it verbally or otherwise. And then third, set a recursive intention to connect not mind to not mind across all time and space and all levels of your being, whether you are aware of them or not. You create intentions that move across all of time and space that are working continuously. Connecting not mind is 
a recursive intention that magnifies the effects of not mind. Doing so ensures that perceived issues from the past, the present, and possible issues in the future are handled if you take a few seconds to make these connections. For instance, when you pay money for whatever reason, you state a quick recursive intention for the money to be multiplied in the universe and its effect to be returned to you as financial inflow. A quick intention, lasting no more than one or two seconds, is all you need. You lightly state an intention for money magnification and return while placing no limits or expectations as to the channel or source. For example, the money you paid to your accountant does not need to come back through your accountant. It can flow back to you through infinite universal sources. What is important is that your money, which is energy, has an amplified effect in the world and will eventually flow back to you as goodness. State your intention. Large sums of money come to me easily and quickly. And you apply this intention through all of time and space to work continuously, growing in intensity and magnification for the service of all. You let it go. And then that one intention will continue to work, continuing on a loop over and over again until you dissolve it. Understand that the not mind is all powerful and it can dissolve anything that you want. Establish a clear intention, align your energies, and then connect not mind to not mind. I know that sounds complicated, but you're connecting the portion of not mind within you that is inaccessible, like your subconscious, to the not mind without you. When you have this connection that occurs, you give your instruction, your intention, and then you acknowledge the manifestation when it comes and you reflect and amplify, you refine and set a new intention, it keeps on going. The point is when you do this, it doesn't need to be done often. Recursive manifestation loops are a dynamic, ever evolving process that empowers you to manifest with increasing effectiveness. Follow those steps and it will work. So when you are connecting to not mind, it is only your conscious mind connecting to it. Our goal is to connect not mind to not mind. That's the portion of your mind that is working on your inner body. You're not thinking about beating your heart. You're not thinking about breathing, but it's a limited portion of the not mind that is working within you. And that's your subconscious mind. Then there's the universal mind aspect. Sometimes that's working through us, but it's the portion outside of us. And then we're connecting to that not mind, which is also a part of ourselves, but not processed through the thinking and reasoning of our minds. When we do this, when we establish this connection, it's amazing. You can do it through meditation, through nature immersion. You can do it through non-attachment practice, through stillness and entering into the zero state. Once you do that, amazing things can happen. You can use this not mind to access intuition and inner wisdom. In moments of conflict or difficulty, step back and connect with it. This can give you a perspective on new solutions. You can use it in creative endeavors, whether in arts, writing or problem solving. Invite the inspiration of not mind. There's not some ritual that you have to go through. Just invite the inspiration of that portion outside of your mind that you're not aware of, that you know you're not aware of. And it can provide innovative ideas and perspectives that the conventional mind might not conceive of. It will do things for you and you will not even be aware of it. It takes instructions and it works like a computer. So you can create loops and functions within this not mind. Use it to see beyond the surface of conflicts, to see their root causes. It helps in recognizing the interconnectedness of all things. In your professional life, leverage the not mind for creative thinking and innovation. Its boundless nature encourages out of the box ideas and solutions. Apply the principles of not mind in leadership for more inclusive, empathetic and effective approaches. When you're thinking, you think you are super smart. Even the smartest person in the world, Albert Einstein, if he's stuck within his mind, he is limited. There's a greater mind that you have access to and you can communicate with it in a variety of ways. And as Dot explains, you're communicating from one not mind to another. And that's where you can create these manifestation loops. For instance, you can create an intention. Every time I receive a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars is on the way so that you create a loop. So you receive a thousand dollars, another thousand is on the way as soon as you know it. 
And when you have this instruction, it may take a few times at the beginning to get used to this. But when you've applied this intention in the zero state, in the silence, where you are sort of outside of the mind, something that Joe Dispenza calls the void is the same thing as the not mind. But also understanding that the not mind is also within you. That's the portion of your subconscious that you're not directly communicating with. Maybe you, you can attach or connect to it in dreams. But in the zero state, you can give intentions and they're all powerful. Once you understand this power, you can create loops that continue on and on and on. And that's the point for you. I want you to create loops so that your manifestations don't happen in a single moment, but they're ongoing and they work forever. And there's nothing that you need to do. You can use the not mind to dissolve beliefs and patterns just by asking. When you get into that zero state and you quiet your mind, you can say, I dissolve all blocks, barriers, and limitations to my success and prosperity. When you do this in that perfect state, amazing things happen. It works every time. And so the point is, the place where the manifestation occurs is in a void or zero state. And there is a void and zero state within you and without you. And if you can learn how to connect to these things, because in reality, there is no without. All that you see is you. But what we're trying to do is learn the art of manifesting from self and understanding the true self. The true self is all that you see, space, the planets, the stars, all of it. And that limited self right now in this physical body is only aware of the organic functions of the brain and the way it thinks. Understanding that it's working through a not mind that helps you do the things you want and it's incredibly effective. Now, not mine is just a word that can be used, but the reason it's important to understand is it is everything that is not your mind. So if it's coming up within the conscious mind of your thoughts, that is not the not mind. For you to gain the power of the not mind, you have to go and let the mind quiet. Understanding the mind is limited. It's a very small perspective in trying to manifest from this mind. So all we're trying to do in true manifestation is access the big computer, give it a function, set the instruction, and then let it go. And the better we get at going into the void state, the zero state, we can connect to this not mind and amazing things will happen for you. If you use the steps that I've outlined, as dots explains, you can never be stuck in life. Nothing will ever get you down or keep you down regardless of the outer circumstances. You move beyond knowing that everything is perfect to having the tools to completely resolve any life situation. Anything can be dissolved in seconds and recursively improved without your conscious mental input. Life then becomes a conscious manifestation journey and a moment by moment choice of where you want to direct your creative energies. With this new knowledge, you can set intentions to create things and completely forget about them. You don't have to continually do the affirmation with vain repetition. They will still be waiting for you at the appropriate time and space. You can completely let go and forget about what you have intended. This frees you up to create even more stuff. You're free to change your mind at any time. There is no longer the pressure to get it done right the first time. And this applies to your career and life's work. Every observation becomes a golden opportunity to clarify and fine tune your preferences. You are all powerful. There are no mistakes because you can always reverse things not in line with your current preferences. When you believe in the thoughts your mind offer you, you suffer. It's really that simple. When you completely drop the mind, you go back to that state of inner peace. When you drop the mind and tap into the not mind, you become the embodiment of the universe. The universe is no longer this huge container that encapsulates you. Instead, it becomes the inside of you and you become the whole of the universe at once. This is where all manifestations happen and are experienced. But yet, you remain eternally silent and still. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com And welcome to The Reality Revolution. <laughs>